Hello. I'm yeah. Joanna Latimer. I'm a professor of sociology at Cardiff University, and this is Mara Miele, and I'm a reader in human geography here in the School of uh, Planning and Geography. In this short video, we want to introduce you to our special issue of Theory, Culture, and Society, entitled Nature Cultures science, affect and the non-human. Yes, the ideas of the special issue actually started long ago with an idea of bringing together all the conversation that we had over an extended period of time since 2008 in our reading group, post-human reading group. Um, and over the year we had many uh, seminars, workshops. It the post-human and we put brackets around the post because we wanted to interrogate some of the new ideas that were coming out of social philosophy, um, amongst other things, around the relationship between humans and the world that they live in. These theories are challenging the notion that humans are outside of nature and they're proposing a different way of thinking about our relations uh, to other non-human animals as well as to the planet that we live in. So there are some lovely ideas um, here like from Isabel Stengers about us adopting a planet eye view or from Sarah Watmore who's, uh, who's written in this special issue um, uh, that we live in a more than human world. Yeah, this is really part of um, a debate which is taking place across different disciplines and especially in human geography there is a you know, very animated debate around animal geographies and many of the authors who contributed to these special issues actually are animal geographers. Gail Davis, for example, looking at you know, mouse um, in, in the laboratory um, and then from anthropology and from philosophy. So we've been looking at different engagement uh, we know human animals in different sites and different contexts, just to bring back um, the, the, you know, the richness or the, and the productivity of the engagement with non-humans and, and how they are enriching social life. So the papers, the papers are peopled by meerkats, <laughs> mice, horses, um, the earth itself, I'm trying to think Floating, of this. The uh, water. Water, um, and all our other compatriots that we share the world with. The first theme, really, that the issue addresses, I think is relevant to us all. It's about how in the sciences, whether they're social or physical sciences, how we can start to be more reflexive and do research that engages with the idea that we share the planet with all these non-human others. So one of the things we try to do in the issue is actually interrogate how that division, where it came from in the first place, all the problematic things that have flown from the dividing of the human from the, from the rest of the world that the human lives with and in. So that's a very underlying theme, I think, that emerged in our talks, in our post-human theory cluster, and that definitely started to evolve and emerge from the papers that people gave that came to see us, artists, philosophers, and so on and so forth. So each of the papers, in a sense, takes a slightly different perspective on that problem and issue of relations between humans and non-human others. I think there is also another move which is actually um, enlightening even more this perspective and is about um, how we think about those animals or those non-human entities that become hidden in, in our social life. And I think about Henry Buller's paper on you know, farm animals, how they're always grouped in this species or herd um, how we you know, think about them very much as food and not much as participant in, in social life um, and how much you know, our life is actually depending on you know, the health and, um, and the contribution of, of these animals. So the challenge is to the very notion of an object-subject divide 
um, in the creation of what we think of as scientific knowledge. So many of the papers are, are, are actually offering a very different way of doing science and of thinking about uh, knowledge production that actually allows what we're calling affect, the affective dimension of scientific work, to enter into the picture and the depicting of scientific work and how knowledge is actually produced. So let me give you an example. Uh, Candir in his paper on meerkats helps to show how the meerkats have to learn how to be a bit, bit human in order for the experiments to happen. Mm. And yet that, that idea of them interacting with the scientific project and becoming with the project as a different kind of animal isn't allowed to enter into the scientific representation of the project. So there's almost a demand in a lot of the papers for a rethinking about what really scientists do, how they work, how they interact with the other creatures that they work with, or indeed the other materials that they work with and to allowing that to have more visibility in order actually to do what Isabel Stengers would think of as more ethical and better science. Mm. And I think this is also very much a core, which is in Vincent de Pre papers, where she actually looks at how scientists are allowed to use their body as an instrument to get to know non-human animals and mm. how this kind of approach has been disregarded as non-scientific or anthropomorphic mm. and then all the richness of you know insights that actually using the body is producing and I think is a fascinating way of challenging a kind of standard um, scientific approach. And, and, and uh, what we try and Mara and I bring out in the introduction is we're not asking scientists, our own scientists yes. in social science or in the physical sciences, to abandon some of their methods, their measurements and so, so, so on and so forth, because Van Sien exactly shows how um, these scientists move in between becoming a part, say, of a herd in order to understand better how they relate, how, how they eat, how they be in the world, and then moving from that back to the laboratory to notions of measurement and so forth, but not hiding yes. <laughs> the, the becoming with, as um, uh, uh, Vincian talks about it. I hope you enjoy the special issue and um, I hope it's going to generate even more debate and conversations across disciplines.